Like threads in a cloth, individual people come together to form something bigger and stronger than themselves. I was studying anthropology and I was really interested in learning about myself and my history and heritage. And I found that through our clothing and our textiles because I learned that actually clothing is connected to land. It represents the regions we're from, the different countries that different people live in and really trace our diaspora and our migration. Pachia Lucy Vang is a textile artist, researcher, and teacher specializing in the handcrafted clothing and stitching of her Hmong culture. We've just always been encouraged to understand who we are and where we came from. And I think a big part of that is because the Hmong people don't have a country. And so these types of art forms have been really important in helping us maintain a sense of individual identity, group identity. It's helped us carry on our history and our heritage. The Hmong are an ethnic group with a distinct language and culture, but no country of their own. They trace their roots to China, but many migrated to Southeast Asia to escape conflict in the 1800s. And a more recent conflict brought many to the U.S. At the Hope Center in North Sacramento, a Hmong cultural and community center, Vang teaches a workshop every other Saturday morning. This is a traditional design that usually goes on funeral pieces, that are worn on the body in the casket. It's made to go on the back of a jacket for women. So we're learning this pattern. The bi-weekly workshops, which go through August, teach the art of pandao, mong for flower cloth, a tradition with many variations stretching back centuries, and one that evolved during a dark time for the Hmong people, from flower cloths to story cloths. So this is a diaspora story cloth, and story cloths were actually made in the refugee camps. During the Vietnam War, the U.S. military also engaged in what's known as the Secret War in the neighboring country of Laos, recruiting Hmong men and boys living there to fight against the communist movement. The Hmong were recruited to help the American CIA. Um, and once the Americans left Vietnam, then those recruitments left Laos. And so many of the people, uh, Hmong, Mien, Lao, who were assisting the American military efforts there, were left behind. Starting in the mid-1970s, many Hmong people fled Laos for fear of persecution by the communist regime. Hien Hip Bridge, for example, is depicted here. That was an instant where people were trying to cross the Hien Hip Bridge. Soldiers opened fire and killed a lot of Hmong people trying to leave Laos. These are Laos's newest refugees being evacuated just before the communists moved in. The most tragic victims of the seesaw not-so-secret war in Laos are the refugees. Many settled in refugee camps in Thailand, where Pandao evolved into story cloths created by Hmong women to keep their history alive and support their families by selling their artwork. There's different types of story cloths, like some document folk tales, some document historical events, and then others document migration. For generations, the Hmong had no written language. Culture was passed down through oral tradition and in Pandao. The myth goes that when we had our kingdom and our autonomy in China, we actually had a writing system. But because we became displaced, we lost that writing system. Throughout time, we were able to hold on to these different symbols that used to be a part of our writing system by putting it onto our clothing. Eventually, many Hmong refugees resettled in Europe and the U.S., with tens of thousands moving to Northern California and the Central Valley. <laughs> Like Lu Li, who learned Pandao as a girl growing up in Laos. Later, while a young mother living in a refugee camp in Thailand, Li sewed and sold Pandao to support her family. She still has the needle she used in the camp. She then resettled in Minnesota and eventually California. This one she actually made for the class so that she could show them all the different things you can do with cross-stitching. This elder artisan now helps teach at Vang's workshop, sharing the skills she has honed over a lifetime.
This is my first piece ever that I finished. Angelina Zhang learned Pandao from her mom when she was a kid and is taking this workshop to learn more about the history of the art form and her Hmong heritage. It's a hobby, yes. Um, but it's also learning about yourself and your culture. This mom of four is accompanied by her eldest daughter, Penelope Rose. I usually just pick colors that represent me, that like make me feel like it looks pretty. I wanted her to learn a little bit more about um, our culture altogether. Yeah, I think it's really special. A special tradition that makes a special gift. <laughs> She wants to give one to each of her children so that when she passes, they can remember not to be sad. And she made me one so that I can remember her. <laughs> Passing down culture, stories, and love. A thread running from generation to generation to generation.